In the world of investing, Warren Buffet stands alone. Starting from a scratch simply by picking stocks and companies for investments, Buffet amassed one of the craziest and wealthiest fortunes of 20th century. Making his first investment at the age of 11 selling Coke bottles and newspapers, today Buffet ranks 9th in the list of richest men in the world. He has been on the top of the list a number of times. Buffet took the leap under the mentorship of his teacher, Benjamin Graham, who is known as the father of value investing. He started by picking up cheap, distressed companies which were overlooked by the market. This approach made him become one of the largest shareholders of a textile company named Berkshire Hathaway, whose stock he bought in 1965 through his fund called Buffet Partnerships at $7.6 per share. Since then, Buffet has never sold a single share of the company. Though the company shut its textile operations way back in 1980s, but Buffet continued to buy remarkable companies through the cash in Berkshire Hathaway. Today, the stock of Berkshire Hathaway quotes at $416,000, growing the wealth of those who invested with him in 1965 at the rate of 21% per annum for the last 56 years. The uniqueness of this achievement is more significant that this was the fruit of old-fashioned long-term investing. Published in 1995, this is by far one of the best biographies of Warren Buffet. Let's see what we can learn from the life of the world's greatest investor. This is the better investor helping you achieve your financial goals and freedom through organizing your finance, stock market investing and learning from billionaires. And these are top 5 lessons from the book Buffet The Making of an American Capitalist written by Roger Lowenstein. Lesson number 1. Play the game in which you are good at. From the early days itself, Warren was highly competitive. He wanted to win. When Buffet knew the skill in which he was good at, he only wanted to go ahead in that field. This is described by many a times by Warren Buffet in his lectures as circle of competence, which he also uses before investing in any business. He refuses to invest in a company whose business he is not able to understand. It's hard to digest this fact. But by his feet, one may feel that he must have a remarkable foresight about each and every business. But you would be shocked to believe that Warren Buffet has publicly said that 90% of the businesses that comes to him go in a special place in his office, which is called Too Hard Pile. The businesses that he do not understand, their annual reports and business prospectors find a place in this Too Hard Pile. The paper in this pile straight away goes to trash or recycling. When Buffet started under Benjamin Graham, Warren developed amazing skill to identify cheap overlooked businesses. For 10 years or more that Buffet ran his own fund, the Buffet Partnerships, Warren beat the index all the time in all the years. However, in the bull market of early 1970s, when such bargains were not available in the market and the only stocks that were going up were those that had momentum and were everyone's favourite which is still called the Nifty 50 bubble of 1970s, Buffet threw the towel. He shut his fund and returned the money of his partners. He did not understand the rationale behind up move in such expensively valued stocks and thus unlike other fund managers and people of those times, he did not invest. He was not bothered to wait at the sidelines. Many a times when asked from Buffet that what is the very first thing you look in a business before investing, to them, Buffet says that the business must be in your circle of competence. In his words, if I do not understand the operation of the business, then I do not understand it. Few questions which may help us to better understand the company may be as follows. What product does the company sell? How is the company better than its competitors? Who are the people that buy the products of this company? On what raw material does the cost of the company depends on? Who is the CEO or chairman or the owner of the company? How experienced is the owner who is running it? If you want to learn more about such a checklist, you can see the first lesson from the book Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits written by another mentor of Warren Buffet, Phil Fisher, which I'll cover later in this video. Though such a philosophy to stay within your circle of competence may go against the grain of many people who say that you need to master your fear. 
agreed but when it comes to competition it is the thing that you are already good at you have high chances of becoming best in in an annual shareholders meeting of berkshire hathaway charlie munger the right hand man of warren buffett said you must always put your best people at your biggest opportunities and not your biggest problems same is true for your mind lesson number 2 the power of compounding in today's world of stock market where everyone is looking for next 100 bagger and ways to double or triple your money in few months warren has proven what a normal return of 20 odd percent when compounded for a long period of time can do for you Not only did he start investing when he was 11 years of age but today he's 92. I don't really know how many of us are lucky enough to have such a runway ahead of us but one thing that we can do is start as early as possible. Consistency is the other key. Warren spends 5 to 6 hours every day just reading annual reports of the new businesses, business magazines, newspapers etc. When you compound the 6 hours of reading into every day for say 60 years the outcome has to be grand such a learning machine has very little odds of failing also warren buffett says that unlike any other field when you age you have a disadvantage in investing it can be exactly opposite if you're flexible enough to learn the things happening in the world and that combined with the experience can give you enormous advantage the compounding does not only mean in terms of money but in any field improving 1% every day and compounding that can give you outstanding results which you could not imagine of lesson number 3 role of the role models warren buffett as we know of today is a result of the lessons he took on and implemented from the role models of his life before warren buffett met benjamin graham in columbia university warren's idea of investing was to buy a farm buy weighing machines and pinball machines and put it in barber shops to buy even more machines from the profits or buying a shop but meeting benjamin graham totally changed his life as he introduced him to this thing called value investing some of the important lessons that warren learned from buffett was how to value a business learning about margin of safety which meant that buy only and only if the stock is available much much less than the value you actually perceive of because our estimation of things could be wrong after meeting graham warren used the principles taught to him to give eye popping returns to his partners when he ran his own fund beating index every year and generating positive returns consecutively until he shut his partnership in the 1960s warren read the book by phil fisher named common stocks and uncommon profits from whom warren learned that value is not just in cheap price but in growth of a business too in the invisible things such as management running the business competitive advantage market opportunity motivation of the employees and workers in the company and various other qualitative things are assets which can never be seen on a balance sheet and given a number but makes a huge difference in success of a business but these could only be found out by digging deep into the ground and knowing the organization meeting the employees talking to the competitors the final hit to the nail in the hole was charlie munger the vice chairman of berkshire hathaway and the right hand man of warren buffet munger totally sowed the seeds of circle of competence in the head of warren buffet before he convinced warren to invest only in well run businesses available at cheap to fair price Warren had already made a big heap of money by investing in cheap companies irrespective of their future prospects, management's work culture, longevity etc. If the stock was cheap, it would not matter for Warren if it belonged to a butchery business or an oil extraction business or a coffee bean business. However, as the cheap stocks disappeared and market started to become mostly fully priced that way wouldn't have worked especially with large sums of money that warren was accumulating after meeting charlie munger both of them aligned to the same goal that was to buy businesses cheap but now it was to buy good businesses that were easy to understand and were available cheap these screens finally became the bedrock for any investments made by warren buffet since then and even till now lesson number 4 holding on to investments 
Warren Buffett from his early career as a money manager had the mindset of holding on to companies no matter what. Though most of the companies in Buffett partnerships were made using cigar butt technique of Benjamin Graham as mentioned earlier, but later while making acquisitions for Berkshire Hathaway, he mentioned to his shareholders that these are permanent acquisitions which he does not intend to sell in foreseeable future. Immaterial of the market conditions, immaterial of the price, these were the businesses on which he had very high conviction and actually almost all of his acquisitions were like so. Warren Buffett's acquisitions for 10% of Coke through his company. Baksha was made in 1988, which he has held on till today for last 33 years. Seas Candy in 1972, which he regard as one of his best investment in terms of business operation, which he has been holding on for nearly last 49 years. American Express, which he bought in late 1960s, has been held by him for more than half a century. The business owner's mentality made him stay the course. Warren Buffett says that if you are confident about the prospects of a business, which is great, then the best time to sell it is never. Occasionally, Warren also pulls out the example of Mr. Sam Walton, who started the retail chain of Walmart in 1981 in United States. The company was listed at the stock price of 25 cents. Today, the value of one stock of Walmart is $145, more than 500 times, and this includes the hefty amount of dividends the company has paid. But it is highly unlikely that anyone held with Walmart shares for last 50 years, except for the Walton family themselves who have never sold a single stock. The owner's mentality and holding on to things is stupendous way to wealth if the due diligence done is correct. In words of Warren, marry your stocks. Lesson number five, mistakes of Warren Buffet. Obviously, it would be wrong to say that Warren Buffet is what he is today without making his own share of mistakes. Warren has invested in companies which have gone down to zero, which have seen bankruptcy. This goes on to tell us that no matter how skillful you are, you are bound to make mistakes, not only in this field of investing, but life in general. Dexter Shoe was one such company which was fully acquired by Warren Buffet in 1993. Instead of cash, he offered his shares of Berkshire Hathaway. Dexter Shoe's highly priced shoes were invaded by low-cost, cheap imported shoe. This gave Dexter Shoe a run for their money and in 2001, Dexter Shoe shut its operation. On this, Buffet said that it was the worst deal of his entire career. Warren Buffet even calls Berkshire Hathaway as his worst mistake because he ended up becoming its largest shareholder out of emotional buying to throw away its existing owner out of ownership. Berkshire Hathaway was cheap but it was a failed textile company. Berkshire Hathaway shut its textile operation 20 years later since it was running losses. This tells us to keep emotions out of investing. Despite regretting the purchase of Berkshire, Warren again bought a cheap textile company named Wombeck Mills in 1970s, which had to shut down its operations not couple of years after he had bought it. This taught Warren Buffet a lesson to move on if one type of business or strategy does not work. And in my opinion, this must be the hardest of all for Warren who loved to hold on to things. ConocoPhillips, another crude oil company's last stake was bought by Warren Buffet. This decision Warren took without consultation from Charlie. The stocks of ConocoPhillips were bought when oil and gas prices were at their peak. Warren did not anticipate the dramatic fall in energy prices that was coming. Not long after the value of Warren's investment had reduced to half, he decided to take a loss. Warren says that buying such capital-intensive companies in the wrong part of the cycle could lead to no return on your invested capital for decades. Warren sold out its holdings from US airline stock at a loss in 2020. Thus, it is imperative that Warren had made his shares of mistakes which had costed him million and billion of dollars. But he always took them in the stride and learned his lesson from them, just as we are learning. Let's have a quick recap. It is extremely important in investing to have in-depth knowledge about the business you are investing in. The very first screen you must run before picking stock is a screen of circle of competence. If one does not know how a business operates, 
what is its competition and various other things then you must give that business a pass and continue to hunt for the next investment the compounding is a strange concept which is hard to be understood by human mind and for this reason very few people follow it when everyone entering in the stock market is looking to dabble and double and triple their money in few months book a profit and exit warren has proven what a simple looking return of 20 odd percent annually can do for you if done consistently our role models in lives play a big role to develop us from nothing to something for warren his biggest role models were benjamin graham who taught him value investing philip fisher who taught warren to analyze businesses qualitatively and his right hand man charlie munger who taught him to buy cheap obscure stocks is not the key to success in this game but buying a good company available cheap was the great fruit of owning a good business are received when a business is held for very long periods of time it's akin to saying that you must marry your investments the way you think deeply before deciding to marry a person of interest the same due diligence must be done before investing in a business and once you are convinced about the good prospects of a business the best time to sell is never no matter how decorated a human being is in any field everyone is humbled by their fair share of mistakes even world's greatest investor warren has made them in plenty few of which being dexter shoes berkshire hathaway conco phillips and wombeck mills to name a few mistakes are made by everyone and there's no way around them especially in investing that's it guys if you like the video please like share and subscribe i will come again soon with another investing book until then cheers guys